Sherlock Holmes had always been intrigued by the case of Jack the Ripper, a notorious serial killer who had been terrorizing the streets of London for months. As a detective with a keen eye for detail, he couldn't resist the challenge of trying to solve the case. Holmes started by gathering all of the available evidence, which included witness statements, crime scene photographs, and autopsy reports. He pored over each piece of evidence, looking for any clue that might help him identify the killer. As he studied the evidence, Holmes noticed that all of the victims had been attacked in similar ways. They had all been prostitutes, and their throats had been slit. The killer had also mutilated their bodies in a gruesome manner, leaving no doubt that he was a sadistic and violent individual. Holmes interviewed many of the witnesses who had seen the killer, but their descriptions were vague and inconsistent. He began to wonder if the killer might be someone who was able to blend in with the crowds, someone who had a seemingly ordinary appearance. Despite his best efforts, the case remained unsolved for months. The police were under intense pressure to catch the killer, and the public was growing increasingly afraid. One day, Holmes received a visit from his friend and roommate, Dr. John Watson. Watson was a trusted confidant and a valued colleague, and Holmes had worked closely with him on many cases in the past. But as they sat down to talk, Holmes noticed something strange in Watson's behavior. He seemed nervous and evasive, and he avoided eye contact when Holmes asked him about the Ripper case. Holmes began to suspect that Watson might be the killer. It was a shocking thought, and he struggled to believe that his friend could be capable of such horrific crimes. But as he investigated further, Holmes discovered that Watson had a dark side. He had a history of violent behavior, and he had been seen near several of the crime scenes around the time of the murders. Finally, Holmes confronted Watson with the evidence. Watson broke down and admitted that he had been the Ripper all along. He explained that he had been struggling with mental illness and had lost control of his impulses. Holmes was devastated by the revelation. He had lost a friend and a valued colleague, and he knew that the world would never be the same again. But even in the midst of his grief, Holmes was determined to bring Watson to justice. He turned him over to the police, 